We just want to welcome everyone to this webinar today. We're going to be talking about AI-driven customer service hacks. And I wanted to introduce uh, David Bell uh, Dure. Oh my gosh. Bell Dure. Yeah, sorry. I, I didn't want to mispronounce your name. And David, I'm going to let you introduce yourself today. But uh, just to let you know how we know each other, we are both um, in a consulting group together uh, of, of a number of consultants across Canada. And uh, David was uh, always uh, very um, participative in our group meetings um, around the work he does. And we were always so impressed by his work. And I believe that you're really going to get incredible value today. He's really prepared an incredible information packed webinar. Um, you know, AI is such an, uh, an interesting area and um, it, it's being able to use it outside of just the, the the things that we hear on TV, okay, or here on social media. How can we actually use this to run our businesses? And I think that you're going to find um, that this session today really gives you that. And we're also going to spend some time talking about what are some of the opportunities to get these funded by uh, some of the grants that are available. So with that, David, let me uh, hand this over to you and I'll be participating. I'll be here um, answering questions and um, and uh, and being part of the presentation. Okay, thank you, Marguerite. Um, yeah, my name's uh, David Aldere. Uh I'm, I guess, a serial entrepreneur. I founded a few companies. Um, the most recent one is a consulting company because that's what I really enjoy is providing advice and strategies for, for my clients. It's called Ether Digital. Um, I also have another company that I co-own called Ether Automation, which, as the name implies, we automate software um, primarily within um, an application or a suite of applications called Zoho. But we got our start with um, other automation software such as Zapier and Microsoft Power Automate. Um, and then uh, I also have another company called Match Pro, where we've built an algorithm uh, that links businesses. Uh, it's kind of like a dating app for business associates. Um, and so today I'm going to be talking about um, uh, three customer relationship uh, type of apps and how you can use AI to enhance those applications. Um, <clears throat> before we get started, um, I'd like this to be a conversation. If 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 you're interested, uh, if you have a question, just raise your hand. So if you don't know how to do that at the bottom of your screen, um, under reactions, just click on the reactions and then right there, it'll say uh, raise hand. So click on the raise hand. At the end of each section, I'll pause and um, answer any questions with your hands are raised. Um, I I'm not going to make you turn your camera on. <laughs> so if you're shy and you want to stay off camera, that's fine. It'd be appreciated if you turn your camera on. But um, if you have a question, just raise it and ask it. Uh, you can also put it in the chat and then Mar Marguerite can let me know that it's there. Okay, so three tools uh, that you can implement today to improve your customer relationships. And then at the end of each of the section, I'll talk about some of the hacks you can use with AI. Um, <clears throat> so uh, everybody knows customer satisfaction and loyalty are essentially the drivers of business. Um, and I'm a big proponent of digital technology because digital technology and online channels have made it like more important than ever that you use the right tools um, for effective customer relationship. Um, we're going to be discussing three CRM software, which is obvious, and I'm sure most of you have heard of it, social media management tools and chatbots. So each tool, I think, can transform the way your businesses engage with customers and provide more personalized, efficient and uh, effective service. Um, I'll be going through the benefit, benefits of each tools, uh, some a couple of real life case studies that I can talk about and then performance rep metrics. And then the, at the end, I'll give you um, some AI hacks that I'm aware of. Um, First is CRM. So great customer service starts with a CRM. So uh, if you want to you can raise your virtual hand or just unmute yourself, are they able to unmute themselves? Yeah, unmute yourself um, and just shout out, like, um, do you use a CRM? Like who here uses a CRM? Yeah, or you could just put your, like say something in the chat if you want or thumbs up or whatever it is. And, and if you do use this CRM, what CRMs do you use? All right. So there's all sorts of different types out there. There's free ones. There's paid ones. There's ones that are specific. I like got our organization. We use um, a couple, actually, right. <laughs> um, for different we purposes. Two. We use two uh, primarily, Keep, um, which is more for email marketing and 
customer attraction pieces. And then we use uh, HubSpot for a different part of our business because kind of just keep them separate. Um, so for Keep, we use the paid version and for HubSpot, we use the, the free version, which is interesting. Oh, right. Um, yeah, I've... Uh... Yeah, so for my companies, we use Zoho, uh, although I've, I know I'm familiar with HubSpot. Um, it's just as good, and it depends. HubSpot, I think, is if you're if you're a marketing-based company, so you're really about like generating leads through marketing, HubSpot, I think, is a bit much better than Zoho. Um, but and I'll go into that later. Um, all right. Uh, one thing I also want to say, like, one thing that I know about CRMs, and this is where I specialize, is I know, I don't think I've worked with a single client and my company as well, who hasn't gone through at least one or two CRMs to finally settle on one. Um, it could be a big pain in the butt. Um, and I, I know a lot of people who have just gone back to spreadsheets. So uh, anyway, I'd be curious if anybody uses spreadsheets for their CRM, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm going to keep moving on and, and um, let me know in the chat if you do. Um, so yeah, this is a powerful tool that can help you build and maintain strong relationships. And because at, at its core, it's a centralized database and it is the source of truth for your customer data. So by using CRMs, um, you can gain a very comprehensive understanding of your customer's needs, um, and, and their behaviors. Uh, and then, you know, I think most importantly, it also allows you to talk to each other. So unless you're a one person shop, you're going to have a team and, uh, I have I have one client that I work with. It's just a it's a husband and wife team, and they don't have a CRM, and they they have both called the same lead on the exact same day, right? They're sitting next to each other, and they don't even see it. So a CRM is very powerful because you can track all that, and because nothing will scare away a client than having two calls in one day and they realize you don't talk to each other. <laughs> um, so uh, there are four primary functions for, for the purpose of this call. You can argue there's more, but there's four primary functions of a CRM. Um, when it comes to customer relationship. And so I'm going to talk about that. So um, you acquire leads with marketing. So whether you drive leads to your website and they fill out a form, or let's say you have a LinkedIn campaign through LinkedIn marketing, or people contact you through word of mouth via email or phone, you're going to have leads and you need a place to store them so you can go, hey, salespeople, here's 20 people you can call today. Um, CRM is a great place to do this because um, that way you can collaborate. You can say, you know, I don't know how big your company is, but um, e even if you're just one person, you've called 20 people, you might not remember the next day who you called. So uh, most CRMs, if you make a phone call, it can integrate with your phone. So it'll say, hey, um, a, a 20 second call was made and the notes say left a voicemail. So you know what you've done. And you can also use automations for lead generation to say, hey, you know, as soon as you, you log a call, you can say, great, send them an email saying, hey, I just tried to call you. I'm sorry, I missed you, blah, 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 blah. And then give them a number. Um, and then the next thing you use it for is to convert those leads into deals. So a new lead comes in, you get signed it to somebody in sales, they convert it into a deal. Um, so uh, you want to track this for a number of reasons. So for example, if you have an email campaign and you've contacted, converted somebody into a deal, you're probably going to want to put them on a different email drip or stop it completely. Last thing anybody wants is, you know, they've clicked on that, um, they've clicked on that link that you gave them about this deal. And then they get uh, an email and, and they signed up for your subscription or your service or your product. And then two days later, and uh, you send them an email with an even better deal. And they're like, what? So you want to be able to have that as well, uh, be able to, to track those as well. Um, and then for this call, uh, I think nurturing customers with uh, with service is critical for businesses of all sizes. Um, and for this talk, the ability to nurture clients is the most important feature of, of the CRMs that we're going to talk about today. Um, it's because you, your CRMs will help you track customer interactions and their preferences uh, and enables you to personalize your interactions with customers Personalized interactions um, will improve uh, customer loyalty. Um, your CRM also could automate nurturing tasks, so saving time and efficiency. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, if you have, if you're a service, whether you're a service company or a product company, if a company, if somebody calls you um, and it's linked to your CRM, their, their phone number, or emails you, you can automatically call up a number of uh, information, a lot of information on the customer. You could see what products have they bought, um, if they have an issue, let's say they filed a complaint, you can see whether there's a complaint or an issue or a ticket that's open. And so you'll be better able to, um, better able to, uh, 
work with the customers. One thing I hate is I call customer service after providing a ticket to get an update on the ticket. And they ask me like, hey, can you provide me your ticket number, please? That should already be in their data. As soon as I call, I know they have my phone number because the access to get it, it says, hey, based on your phone number, say your name, right? Um, and then they ask me for my ticket number, like that should already be in front of them. It should be linked to their CRM. And so that builds loyalty, which is my next slide. Um, and so basically uh, through loyalty, you know, you, you get referrals, you build brand awareness. Um, so you want to basically use your CRM to keep as much information about your customer as possible so that you can build loyalty. So um, here are some quick reasons of why you should consider having a CRM. So if you don't have one, um, here you go, uh, increase revenue. So, um, you know, there's a nucleus research found that uh, for every dollar that their customers spend on um, a CRM, they get $8.71 back. Um, improve customer retention. Um, you have a 27% increase in customer retention rates for companies that use CRM versus customer com companies that do not. Uh, productivity is going to be higher. Um, your people who use CRM companies that use CRM see a, a, almost a 15% increase in sales, uh, productivity on average. Um, most likely because the CRM enables their sales team to manage their leads more efficiently and focus on the most promising opportunities. Uh, sales forecasting, um, which, uh, if you, if you like finances and accounting as a background, which I have, like, that's really important to predict your cash flow. Um, and businesses with CRMs are 26% more likely to have accurate sales forecasts because you have more visibility into the sales pipeline and it enables salespeople to track their progresses towards their goals. And then lastly, I mentioned before, there's better collaboration. So almost a third increase of team collaboration because the CRM provides a centralized location for all customer data. Here's a list of the most popular CRMs. Um, I, I I literally copied and pasted this from Forbes. Just to, <laughs> um, HubSpot didn't make it, hey? <laughs> I, I, HubSpot isn't a lot. So I, I, I just did one reference. Like okay. Forbes is a good source for, um, they do an annual rating. Captera is good as well. And you'll notice that every CRM also ranks other CRMs. Um, uh, Zoho is, or sorry about Zoho, HubSpot is usually on most of them. Um, for some reason, Forbes didn't like them for for uh, for for this this rating. I got the link there, so it's the CRM for small business. HubSpot is expensive, it is, yeah. And so most small businesses they balk unless they get the free version. Um, uh, if you're, I have one client that I recommended PipeDrive to because they they really wanted something simple, right? The Zoho isn't intuitive for everybody, and same and and then um, Salesforce is definitely comprehensive. It can be overwhelming. So here's the gamut of it of it there. Um, the link's at the bottom. If you just search uh, best CRM small business 2023, it'll probably be at the top of your search. Um, I'll give you a couple of case studies. So I'll give you a small, what, what was a small business case study. So Airbnb, um, when it first started, it didn't use a CRM. Um, and then by adopting, uh, they used, they ended up using Salesforce and through adopting Salesforce, they, their conversion rates increased by 30% almost immediately. Um, further, they're able to like respond to 90 customer inquiries within 24 hours, which they weren't able to do. Um, another one, a bigger case study is, uh, Bank of America. So I didn't realize I was actually astounded by this and I'm, I don't have the date for when they did this. But I just assume banks all would have always would have had CRMs, but they didn't. Bank of America um, adopted a CRM system through Salesforce, and um, they went from like ninety five percent of customer inquiries were resolved within uh, like within twenty four. I think what it was ninety five percent of customer inquiries were resolved on the call, um, and that was up from eighty two percent, which is still pretty high. But it's almost it's an almost perfect score from not having a CRM because your people can see what they're looking at. Um, Twenty percent reduction in call center costs because of that. So your people aren't having repetitive having to field repeat calls because they can solve it. Uh, five times increase on the number of customer interactions per day. So that and consider that they have increased number of customers customer interactions per day. It's because you can take more calls. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then a 15% increase in customer satisfaction scores. So for a bank, um, I think just like in Canada, banks aren't looked favorably. So people are more willing to switch a bank if they can, if, if this customer service uh, annoys them. Okay, last Bye. is mm-hmm. using AI. So there's there's four points you can use AI with your CRM. Um, my favorite is automated data entry. So most CRMs have... Um, not only CRMs, but you can also use Zapier, Microsoft Power Automate to, um, mm-hmm. uh, how do I put it, to uh, copy over data entry. So for example, if you, you know, people have a, they fill out a form, you can use integrations and automations to automatically do that for you. Mm-hmm. Um, but what AI can do is if you get an email or a social media thing, the AI can actually pick it apart better. So there's, there's applications called um, email parsers and doc parsers, but everybody uses different kinds of email formats, email receipts, and there's free form. AI is better, much effective to pull that information out. So you can tell AI, find me the most likely email address from this email, um, find me what they're interested in, give me a summary. And then, you know, you can tell AI to do that. So things that typical or traditional automations don't do, you can use AI. Um, Predictive analytics. So you can use AI to analyze customer data in the CRM. So you can say, hey, look at my CRM. Um, tell me like things that you don't see. Um, uh, personalization, um, AI, you can use it to personalize customer interactions. So you can analyze customer data and provide tailored recommendations. So um, you're not going to notice the note that somebody put in that um, somebody's, uh, I don't know, somebody's kids graduating from university or their kids in the hospital, right? You're not going to notice with like, well, depends on how many clients you have, but AI can actually see that like, Hey, you're interacting with this person. Um, Two weeks ago, somebody made a note that this person was in the hospital, their kid was in the hospital. So maybe we should make a personal thing like, Hey, um, AI can grab that. Um, And then last is voice assistance. I'm not too clear about how this would work, um, but you can use AI powered voice assistance um, into your CRM to provide hand-free access. So what, what it looks like is if you call most, um, banks and they have like, they just say a number, or say this, the AI, uh, a lot of that's programmed, but AI is better able to say, better able to, um, to, to actually convert your real life or how to put it like your, 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 your gen, I'm missing a word right now. Um, your, your typical language. So like people will use the letter O instead of a zero. And so some, some, some bots have to be trained that they say, oh, it means a zero. But um, uh, one thing that AI can do is if you stutter or if you're like, uh, so for example, if, if uh, I'll say TELUS, TELUS is a big one. So if they're like, please say your phone number. And I go seven, seven, um, nine, <laughs> wait, seven, seven, eight. Well, AI can actually hear that you're stuttering and actually peaks together. And it works really well. If you have a Google assistant at home, try it. Um, uh, AI is really good that way. Mm-hmm. Anyway, do we have any questions? Before yeah, we- I have a question. Um, if you are talking to smaller organizations, right? Like, how can they use this? How can I mean? I understand the banks and the big telephone companies, right? Like, they have thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of customers. But what about people who just have maybe hundreds of of people that they work with? Um, how can they use some of these tools? Most CRMs nowadays have like their own AI. It's probably not as good as like the chat GPT, which has become the gold standard. And like the difference between gold and silver when it comes to AI is huge from what I can see. Um, So for example, I don't know what HubStock calls it, but Zoho calls it Zia. And you can train it to give you insights. You can train it to um, look at the email. And so it's built into the platform. Uh, another one is you look at some, so if you don't know, uh, and I don't know what the acronym, few people know what the acronym API stands for, but J- chat GPT does do um, AI. So what you could do is you can have a, a software developer go into your backend and you can say, hey, I want you to, I, I have a paid subscription to open AI. I want you to use um I want you to basically uh, take all my data and once a day have send all this data to chat to, to open AI and have it tell me, hey, what's trending and stuff like that. Um, it has to be the, the great thing about AI is I really can't give you there's no there won't be any generic solutions because the whole point of AI is because companies um, speaking of CRMs, there's not a single company out there that uses a CRM the exact same way. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
And so when you integrate, um, so for use cases, so when you integrate it, uh, you, you really need to do it on a case by case basis. But mm -hmm. for most small businesses, what I recommend is look at your and have a call with your CRM partners or your CRM sales reps to find out how what their AI is and how you can use it. There's also like I know Zoho has a, a whole whole series of YouTube videos that you can watch to see how mm -hmm. you can set up SIA. Um, what I do know is um, for AI with Zoho, um, if you the AI takes a lot of um, it takes a lot of uh, samples to train. So uh, for Zoho Desk, for example, they need, so if you have a, a, cer a certain type of desk ticket, um, Zoho needs, Zoho Zia needs about 3,000 3, cases for it to learn from. Um, and I think that's why chat GPT is so powerful is because they've been feeding it the internet uh, up until 2019 or 2020. And so it has all of these cases to go by. Cool. Any other questions? <clears throat> okay, I'll move on to the next one. How are we doing for time? Oh, um, okay. Social media management tools. So um, these are pretty, these are like one, this is like one app to rule them all. So social media management tools, uh, they manage social media presence uh, effectively and efficiently. So you can have um, all of these apps in one screen. So it'll show you what your inner Instagram, your uh, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Everything you have, you can link to a social media management app and it'll show if you make a post, you can make a post in the in the social media monitoring app and you can put it on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, and then if it's got the correct number of characters, Twitter, and then you can monitor how people are reacting, how many people have liked it, how many people followed it. And so you don't have to go and log into each of these apps. Um, so it's a great way to monitor, publish and analyze your social media content. And it's also critical for customer service. Um, um, and the reason why is because if even if you don't post something, if somebody sends you on your, let's say your, your Facebook page or your company's LinkedIn page, if somebody uh, sends you, um, hey, you know, a, a great example is airlines. Somebody will go and say at Virgin, why am I still at the gate? We've been waiting for two hours and and Virgin Airlines and uh, was the leader here. Um, and I have some examples from Delta. Uh, they were they responded within seconds saying we're sorry. And then they. They, they, they gave an example. And this person, when they interviewed the person afterwards, like, I'm going to fly Virgin from now on. Like, yes, I was frustrated. I've been sitting in the cabin of the plane. It was delayed. But the fact that they replied to me within like a minute um, on social media just tells me like how much they care about my service. Um, and so, uh, and, and the reason why that matters for you, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know if you're Costco shoppers, but uh, Costco always accepts returns. So now like, all businesses are expected, my wife does this all the time, she'll go to Canadian Tire and try to return something three months or four months later, and they won't take it. And she gets pissed because Costco does. And so the same thing with social media monitoring is because these companies are constantly monitoring their social media, customers expect a prompt reply now. Um, and it allows you to effectively manage customer interactions on social media. You can, you can, if something negative is happening on social media and you're monitoring it properly, you can nip it in the bud before it gets out of, your, out of control. Um, so some of the key benefits to using social media management tools and customer service, and I'll talk about AI in a second. Um, so uh, it improves satisfaction. So uh, it allows you to quickly and efficiently respond um, and it leads to an increase in customer satisfaction and loyalty. So here's an example from JetBlue Airways. They use it to monitor customer inquiries, complaints on social media platforms like Twitter and Facebook. They have a full-time team 24 seven that responds quickly uh, to customer feedback. They always provide personal responses to each inquiry and complaint. Um, and so if a customer tweets at JetBlue about a flight delay, their social media team will reply quickly, acknowledge the customer's concerns. They'll, they'll, they'll have like live updates saying, you know, um, we've talked to the pilot, you know, it's a mechanical difficulty. Uh, we're probably gonna have to switch planes. Um, they may also offer compensation or other incentives saying, hey, you know, send us a private message with this code and we'll give you, uh, or send us a private message and we'll give you, we'll, we'll give you uh, some compensation. We'll give you a free drink or something like that. That's so um, interesting. I guess it depends on your audience, right? Like if they're really social media savvy, then uh, they have an expectation that you're going to be responsive, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, is that what you see? Is that the, the companies that are, you know, 
dealing with certain types of demographics where they have this high expectation they're using social media regularly, that's where organizations really need to be responsive because that's yeah. where they're going for questions, right? They don't want to come to your website. <laughs> yeah. And, and, they're gonna, and I they're think, tweet at you. <laughs> right. And you have to, and, and the important thing about is, and I'll talk about with AI is also man monitoring other people's trends because this could get to such a point where airlines, you know, they're, it's so expected that there's a delay that, Hey, every time there's a delay, if you send them a LinkedIn or a Facebook message, they'll give you a free drink. It, it'll almost become businesses are going to use, you know, management science. They're going to be like, great. This is how we're 50% of our flights are delayed. We're going to, you know, increase our prices by $7 to account for the free drinks we're always giving out or something like that. So you can see that. And, and, and eventually customers might, some airlines might actually stop doing that um, or, or whatever. Um, uh, so where was I? Yeah. So um, it, it does increase brand awareness and reputation. So by, by doing that, so uh, you're publishing relevant and engaging content of social media um, through multiple channels, you can increase your brand awareness and build positive brand reputation because you're, you're getting through like your social media channels. Let me go back to that last slide. Like right there on this screen, you've got uh, eight, eight social media channels just right here. So and you can do that with one post and hit all of those channels. And so you increase brand awareness. Um, here's an example from Nike. They use social media management tools to create like, they, they, it's like free advertising. So they have visually stunning, engaging content on Instagram and Twitter, um, you know, by publishing high quality photos to showcase their products, they regularly are posting updates on new brand releases, new product releases and upcoming events. Um, so for example, they have 150 million followers on Instagram. Um, and 20 years ago, this was a company that would have to pay the television networks and newspaper for advertising. This is all free. Um, uh, and, and so basically you're, you're building your brand. Um, and then same with Twitter again, although I think it's free, but I don't know how Elon's going to monetize that. Um, mm -hmm. but again, they, they get this huge reach through their social media and, um, uh, and it's all free. Whereas, you know, this is a company that would pay three to $4 million for a 30 second Super Bowl ad too. Um, and they probably have a greater reach on Instagram than they do on the, the Super Bowl, I think. Uh, and then social media monitoring also leads to more effective uh, social media uh, 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 marketing and advertising campaigns um, because it gives you insight into your customer behavior and it enables you to, to, to be more targeted and effective. So if you're, you know, for example, if you can see your customers on Facebook are different than your customers on LinkedIn. Um, and so like, uh, the example here is Lululemon will use social media management tools to analyze customer engagement, um, on social media and they gain insight on what their customers want. And so based on these, they can develop targeted ad campaigns and Facebook is really good. So if you haven't advertised on Facebook or LinkedIn, um, they can use statistics so they know, great. If somebody likes, um, so for example, if somebody likes, it, it's really weird, but they can see like, if somebody likes a, a TV show let's say uh, it's the one my kid like, or Sheldon um, on the young Sheldon, mm -hmm. right? They know that that person is more likely to buy Lululemon versus this. Uh, it, it's really weird, but they can actually use statistics. So you can actually um, use social media to drill down on this. And so Lululemon will do this and they'll say, great, based on, you know, these statistics, we want people who like this kind of show and like this kind of sport and we're going to have a targeted ad. And so only Facebook users that are like within that target will be um, targeted. And that is because they can actually see through their social media, the types of people who like their ads and they're able to like give more and more targeted um, ads. Um, I believe you can even target it to people who only liked your ads. Um, so you can say, great, these people have already engaged with us. So we're only gonna have a special campaign for them. And again, that, that improves customer loyalty. Um, valuable insights in customer behavior and preferences. So um, these tools uh, enable you to track and analyze customer engagement on social media. So you can say, great, we just did this posting. Um, we got way better returns on LinkedIn than Facebook. Let's let's like plan to use this more on LinkedIn for this or why it didn't it work on Facebook and what do we need to twist? So Starbucks uses it. Um, they use Twitter, Facebook. They track mentions of their brand and then and a specific uh, product promotions. And that gives them insights into their customer behavior and preferences. And so they're able to use that. One example was they get feedback on their pumpkin spice 
uh, latte promotion, which is like the, I, I don't know if you, I, I have this impression that that's probably their biggest campaign of the year because like a lot of people react to pumpkin spice lattes mm -hmm. um, and they're able to identify areas to make the lattes better and adjust it, which feeds into it being one of their most popular annual or um, seasonal products. Uh, okay. I'm going to speed through this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to not go through all of these. You can read them as I go through them just for time. Um, so again, cu increased customer engagement. So 20% more likely to retain your customers, uh, improve customer satisfaction, a higher brand awareness. So almost a third increase of brand awareness compared to businesses who don't use these tools. Um, much more effective marketing campaigns. So 90% of marketers say that social media tools have, have helped their effectiveness in marketing efforts. Um, valuable customer insights. Oh, and, and as an aside, I, if you send, I'll, I'll give you my email at the end. If you want references for any of these, I can give them to you at, if you send me an email. Um, uh, where was I? Uh, last is, um, uh, increased efficiency. So, uh, you save an average of six hours per week which, you know, marketing, unless you're using somebody overseas, marketing isn't always cheap. Okay, here are some popular social media monitoring apps. Um, uh, there is one for the list and the reference there, there was 14 and they didn't all copy here, but um, HubSpot is on there. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Hootsuite is at the top. Uh, Hootsuite is, 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 I think, primarily famous for social media monitoring. Okay, AI. Um, so AI, people are sub people have like their own like um subjective interpretations of everything. So AI can actually take, can actually look at customer sentiment better than somebody, a human, because it's it's unbiased. It can just basically say, great, this is the language they're using. So so you know, if if you trust a human, the human might have the, the person might have a, a trigger word. And so somebody uses a trigger word, and to them that means the end of the world. But the AI is going to see actually it's not that big of a deal. And so sentiment analysis, AI can be used uh, as an unbiased way to analyze social media content and determine whether the sentiment is positive, negative, or neutral. Um, and then um, you can use that to understand how customers are feeling about their brand, products, services. Um, uh, for there's some examples. I don't want to get into politics, but there's a I think um, uh, some of the news lately. I saw it on Stephen Colbert, Bud not Bud Light. Bud Light, um, Bud Light's had a campaign where um, uh, he, it was really silly, but like basically uh, Kid Rock and a few other people are upset with Bud Light. And so your AI there is really good at actually saying like, hey, is it like, what are people actually saying? It'll have an unbiased view of what's going on. It's like, great, this is this is where people are going. Um, I know that's a, that, 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 that is like the, not the best example because it's really written in <laughs> politics and stuff like that that I don't want to get into. But like um, the great thing there is the media will have its biases and the AI won't. So the media can be like, yeah, great. This is the end of the world for Bud Light is according to some people and other people are like, but the, the AI can say, actually, no, it's not. This is what our, our analysis says. We have this many people liking it and they're blah, blah, blah. Um, predictive analytics. So AI can um, analyze social media to predict customer behavior and preferences. So it, 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 again, it has to be trained. So um, it needs to actually see like, great, if you do this, this is probably what's going to happen. Or if um, if uh, this many, and it's really interesting, it can see trends. So it could see, great, if, if, if 50, LinkedIn's a really good one. So AI will actually say, hey, if you have 10 people who like your article, it'll go to 100. So what you, you know, and it can actually give you ideas like, look, you really want to get 10 people to like your article. So get on the phones and call everybody, you know, to have them like your article, because the AI is telling me if I, every time I go over 10, it goes to a hundred or a thousand. Um, uh, again, AI, I'll talk yeah. about it in more detail later. You can use AI for chatbots. Um, so they use their, they, uh, they provide, they're, they're, they're better able to engage with the customers and, um, <clears throat> Uh, they can analyze images and videos on social media to identify brand logos and other relevant information. So that's that's something you couldn't do through parsers, um, and you can't do this with ChatGPT yet. But you can actually give AI a picture, and it can pull out a oh, great. This is uh, this is what's happening in the picture. All right, last section: chatbots. Um, mm -hmm. Well, you know, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more about the um, the social media pieces because, and, and maybe that's a different 
that's a whole kettle of fish. Like that's another, another conversation, right? To talk about the algorithms and how they're using AI um, and how that might be impacting our customer service, right? Because not able to respond, um, not able to be seen. What do you mean by that? Oh, uh, great. Well, you know, specifically you mentioned LinkedIn and I know for sure, and I agree with you, by the way, the algorithm gets trained, right? We train the algorithm. Some people's posts get seen, some people's don't, right? So even big companies, they're posting and they've got thousands of people that are on their, you know, that they're they're, they're connected there. to, that they're following. Um, but then they post something, you'll see that only maybe, you know, 20 people, 30 people, 100 people look at it or like it or whatever. So, um, you know, how that's tying in is uh, in, in training this AI algorithm behind the scenes. So I just want to emphasize that because yeah. that really impacts our, our relationship with our clients because we won't even be seen. They won't know what we're trying to tell them. Okay. They won't even see it uh, yeah. because the algorithm hasn't been trained yet. So just to keep that in mind, right. That it's so important to know that, you know, it's, it's there, but it's waiting for our input. Right, it's not going to just do things on its own. Yeah, exactly. And you can be really clever with AI. Um, so if you have your AI uh, analyzing your, you know, your LinkedIn feed, and it knows you could, in, you can use it with custom automations to to actually interact. So you know, LinkedIn, there's a um, uh, if you have uh, there's ways to do this with LinkedIn where you can have like um, there's software out there that can. Um, uh, send messages to people so you can actually see great so no one's reacting to this feed um but we know here's some people who have reacted to our to our things in the past you know maybe strategically like hey how's it going you basically like figure out a way to push it to them or uh or or another way you do it is you basically go and you like an article on their part and because you've liked it they're like well who are these guys and it actually might increase and ai can test that so i i don't know if this is how linkedin work but if ai can say great i've liked their feeds and um, they do nothing, then AI has learned something. But you can also have it say, you know, if I like their feed, AI will learn, hey, maybe they'll do a reciprocal and like our feed. And so if AI can learn who does that, it'll remember, okay, John Smith, typically when I, when I send him a message or as I like his feed, he always replies back to me. And you can kind of do stuff like that. And, and you can actually program AI where if somebody likes your stuff, you can say AI might want to try liking theirs back to increase engage like two-way engagement. Um, so, so if you could be great thing about AI as well as existing automations and existing applications is you could really be um, innovative and in how you can engage your customers. Uh, chatbots. So a chatbot is uh, essentially it's a computer program. So uh, I'll, I'll, there's two types of chatbots we'll go into a second, but it's essentially it's a computer program designed to simulate human conversation. Uh, it, primarily, we know them through text, but they can also do voice interactions. Um, typically, if you call into a customer service, that's also a chatbot. Um, they can provide support, answer questions, perform tasks. Um, they are really important for customer relationships because they provide quick, efficient, around-the-clock uh, support. Um, they reduce response times. Um, they personalize service through AI and machine learning. So if you, if you, if you know, most, most chats will be like, please provide your email address and the AI can go and say, pull up your profile. The AI will be like, okay, so what's your issue? It's like, I'm calling about this problem I have with my computer, blah, blah, blah. It'll actually say, great. You've actually got an open ticket. Is this related to that? And you're like, yes. And so this is stuff that a human can do, but you can't really program it in, um, and then uh, it, it will improve customer, your relationship with your customer through very fast, efficient support. Um, so types of chatbots, they're rule-based. So this is the low tech. And so what it is, is you have to program it or somebody from your company has to program it where you know you ask a question and it'll automatically, you can tell um, uh, when you go to certain chatbots, if you ask a question, it'll put up like five options and you have to click one. So those are typically rule-based chatbots. So um, what they've been told to do is they look for keywords and then based on those keywords, it gives you options. And there's always like, no, this is not my issue. Um, and so you, what they're trying to do with rule-based chatbots is guide you to an FAQ or some kind of uh, uh, article that you can read on your own so you don't have to speak to a per person. Um, 
So uh, they, they do use algorithms, but they can be uh, integrated with machine learning capabilities. Um, they're very useful for answering simple or frequently asked questions. So like store hours, uh, return policies. Um, they're limited to the, pros, the, the responses that you program into them. And uh, if, if it gets complex, it's just going to frustrate people. Unless you have the ability to bring them into customer service, you, you really need to um, make sure that you have a, somebody on the back end or tell them right away. Um, uh, what I find is that's very helpful is if, if, if you're not going to have a live person to support and you know you only work from nine to five, then you need to tell your customer right at the beginning saying, we don't have human support. Our regular hours are here. However, type in your question and our bot will try it. You have to tell them that right from the beginning because last thing something wants, last the person things, last thing a person wants is they type in all of their issues. And at the end of the day, they're like, or at the end of the chat, they're like, okay, great. We'll contact, send us, we'll send you an email and contact you tomorrow. They're like, no, <laughs> I would, you know, they just wasted their time. Um, I find that, uh, at least my experience is, um, and if you had anybody listening has a comment, my experience has been that um, I always get passed to a human. I don't know if it's just the nature of my issues, or I, I always figure out things on my own, the simple things, but I always get passed to a human, um, which is where AI driven would be more beneficial. So um, AI driven chatbots, they are artificial intelligence and they use machine learning algorithms to learn from all of your customer behaviors. So as a caveat to that, I know Zo like I mentioned earlier, Zoho Zia um, needs about 3000 test cases for a product line or a service before it can learn how to respond to customers um, and provide answers. Um, they understand natural language. So people, they'll, which, which also means spelling mistakes. So if people do typos, the AI mm -hmm. will be able to get that. Whereas if you do um, the rule-based, um, it might not pick up the, uh, the spelling mistake. Um, they learn from customer interactions and feedback. Um, they can handle a wide range of tasks. So um, when you do lead generation, so a lead comes in, um, they can ask you, you know, ask the questions. You don't have to program it. They can ask the questions that needs to get the answers and they can actually learn to, to be more effective. Uh, if you give it the goal of like, Hey, you need to convert 30% of the people you chat with, it'll actually trial an error itself until it generates, um, until it generates a higher proportion of leads. So it'll learn at a much faster rate than a human would. Um, and they're also not embarrassed about what they say. Uh, again, they operate 24 seven and they reduce your workload. Um, they do require more resources and they are more expensive. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's interesting. I know we had this uh, conversation previously about, um, cause I'm based here in Toronto, right? So the city of Toronto, we got a parking ticket and uh, which I hate getting, but anyways, every once in a while it does happen. And uh, to pay for that ticket on the, uh, the city of Toronto website, they're using AI now. Uh, whereas you don't talk to anyone, um, you don't pay through the bank, you pay through a chat bot and you don't, you know, it's very conversational. It's like, Hey, what's your name? What's your ticket number? Okay. And then it pulls that information up and says, is this you, is that you, is this the case? Did this happen? What do you want to do? Um, and they take you right through the whole entire process to pay all the way to pay for this ticket. Um, but it isn't a form. It's a conversation. And I right. think this is the future of where we see this automation going it's you know all those things that people used to call you for right filling out forms doing whatever kind of interaction you know whatever kind of processing um, can now actually be done through these chat bots um, and there are like very affordable ways to start doing that now yeah i was actually you told me about that yesterday i was amazed my mouth I think I, I know it was pretty, you know, it was pretty amazing. Like how too. Can any municipality in Canada, I know. <laughs> nobody like, was more I shocked. Than Toronto me. was an early adopter. <laughs> <laughs> nobody was more shocked. I was like, what is this? Oh my gosh. It was yeah. weird. Um, so, you know, if the, if the municipalities can do it, imagine what we can do as organizations, right. To really support this for our customers. So those chat bots, just by, you know, tweaking it and letting them start learn, uh, learning from our customer interactions, um, they can make that process. I did not yeah. need to talk to anyone. Okay. Yeah. This whole thing, I get everything online. They anticipated, they, you know, they, they've really taught it well. 
um, all the things that you would like to do and, you know, which way those conversations can go. So I'm looking forward to paying all of my city of Toronto bills, like tax and water and yeah. all the other stuff that they charge us for. Um, <laughs> through yeah, this, I look uh, forward to, uh, like we <laughs> talked earlier, this is going to create expectations. I look forward to, you know, yeah. cities being forced to start using this because everybody's going to expect to be able to pay car parking tickets and then that'll spread out to um, paying your taxes and stuff like that. Or, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I live in a municipality. It's part of the greater Victoria, but it's called Saanich. And every time I need to look for like my property taxes or utility bill, it's, I have to, I have to drill down. I'm just like to have it bought. Where do you want? I want to pay my property taxes. And like, great, <laughs> like on this link um, or, or yeah. whatever. Um, uh, uh, quickly, I'll talk about chatbot subtypes. So less important is the, the, the main types, but um, it's still good to mention. So there are chatbots for support. So they're designed to provide customer service and support. So that's what I talk about. So frequently asked questions, um, typical problems. There's sales chatbots. So again, lead generation. Uh, I, I, I I haven't heard of any of it yet, but now I'm going to like keep an eye out for any case studies I hear about companies using sales chatbots to increase leads and see how that works. Um, uh, for my own company, that's a big pain point. Uh, service chatbots. These again are more for post-purchase support. So like, Hey, you know, um, uh, I just bought something from Amazon and it showed up broken. Um, and so it's going to have a different kind of uh, mm -hmm. issue that support chatbot, which is built into, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how to turn my device on. Um, social media chatbots, and these are designed to interact with customers. Oh, this will be great for AI, and I'll get to it in a second. Like, I, I, you know, you have whole teams. I don't know. Most airlines, for example, are constantly delayed. Um, so they have to have whole teams like, I don't know how many hundreds of people like monitoring social media and react right away. It'd be great if to have AI, like, Hey, you know, um, and, and, and the great thing about these airlines is they have all of the ex existing chats in their database. So they can train the AI really easily to say, Hey, great. If they're tracked then give them a free drink or whatever. Um, and that actually goes back to the CRM. So if you know, the passenger, let's say, you know, that they're, um, I think right now it's uh, Ramadan. So if you know that they're Muslim for whatever or, or, or something like that, you'd be like, great, well, we're not going to offer this person a free drink. Um, we're also going to be like, we also understand that it's important for this person to eat before the sun rises and et cetera. So you can actually use your chatbots and train them to be very sensitive to that kind of thing. If your chatbots are integrated with your social, um, with your uh, CRM. Uh why you should use well so the next one is why should you consider using chatbots again for the sake of time i'm just gonna i'm gonna go through this uh i can give you uh if you want the, the data here but basically it i think i've covered most of this stuff it's very valuable for your company to use chatbots i don't know if you're going to talk about it marguerite but there is a, uh, a in bc it's a company called alacrity um if you don't use a chatbot there is a government grant that I want to just quicken aside. I, I know this really well because my wife works for this nonprofit that gives this grants mm. in BC called Alacrity, but it's um, this Canada Digital Adoption Plan Stream One. It's mm. up to $2,400 to add um, e commerce to your website, and chatbots are counts as e commerce. Absolutely. So, uh, we can go that later. Um, popular chatbots. Yeah, uh, just uh, really, really, really one quick thing about that one. It's only for companies or organizations that face directly to customers yes. that do direct, direct customer. So if you're selling to other businesses, that grant isn't for you, but we can talk about some other opportunities. Yeah. Um, popular chatbots, HubSpot. Uh, again, this is Forbes uh, HubSpot. It's the first time that HubSpot's been here. Um, so sure I'm not biased. Is there's no <laughs> not. Um, so have a look at those. Take a screenshot if you want. I think we got like five minutes left. Uh, using AI with chatbots. I, I, I'm not going to go into much detail here because I've really covered most of it. But um, natural language processing. I love how AI. Um, if you don't have a Google, I have. I, I, I used to. Be, I'm a total Apple nut, but except for Siri, I can't stand Siri. After I got a Google Assistant, um, if I ask Siri what the weather like what is like in like. Um, I live in Victoria, so I'll, I'll, but I'm, let's say I'm going to Toronto. I'll say, hey, Siri, what's the weather like in Victoria? I mean, Toronto. Google can answer that. Siri cannot. Um, so natural language processing, uh, personalization, it gets to know your behavior. 
uh, machine learning. So it's constantly getting better. So I, I use chat GPT. Um, I've told it like I'm Canadian, stop giving me spelling and you know, it's the L <laughs> labor is L A B A or B A O U R not the American way. And it's like, great, I will consider this from now on. So it's constantly learning who, who you are, what your preferences are. Um, and then contextual awareness. Uh, again, tying back to the CRM, the CRM is the contact for your customer and AI will be able to analyze in seconds. It'll be able to, uh, I'm not, I don't have time to show you, but like a CRM, you can have your contact and an account and then related to that account, you can literally have hundreds of other related modules, deals, um, other contacts, notes, calls you've made, chats you've made, tickets, et cetera. A person is not going to be able to go through that. AI can do it in seconds. And they can get the context of why the customer may or may not be contacting you. Um, so we've got a few minutes for questions. Yeah, absolutely. We covered a lot of content here, David. <laughs> um, and yeah, tons and tons. Like there's so much that you can do. And I, I just think oh, that's what we should kind of wrap this up and say, hey, you know, there's so many things that you can do with AI you really, you know, and it's just so specific to your organization's needs. Um, and I think that's really where we're at is saying, you know what, let's, first of all, invest. There's yeah. money available right now to invest in these types of programs. And this was going to take you over and above um, your, com your competitors, right? So take the time, speak to a professional like David. Um, if you have a, a requirement to go out to the market from a customer service perspective, this is your opportunity because not only can you get some great advice uh, from a professional like David, but you can also potentially get some funding. Um, so if you have questions, I know that we're running a little bit low on time. Just put it into the chat or, you know, we'll, we'll make it available to, you know, pop in and have a quick chat with us if you have any questions. Yeah, about I, that I put my right? email in the chat. In Perfect. And, and, and um, I, I know I say like, you know, I, I can talk about automation, customer service, but if you hear me talk about AI, um, I'm, Hey, I, I'd be happy to just hop on a call with you and just brainstorm. Um, at my one of my companies, we looked at like the possibilities are huge. One of my companies, we actually trialed this with before ChatGPT came out with OpenAI. We took a picture of a pizza menu, and this wasn't like a major pizza chain. This was like a, a like a single pizza chain. We took a picture of the menu, we fed it into OpenAI, and then we say, "Great, um, I'm a vegetarian." Um, but I like bacon. So, um, uh, uh, oh, and I'm allergic to this. Tell me which items I, sh I, I should avoid and which one, or so which items can I um, uh, have? And OpenAI was able to basically parse out all the information from a photo and say, here's what you should have. And then great, I really would like something that has like a Mediterranean feel. And like, great, then we'll order this. Okay, order me that. And so if you're if you were like a boutique or something, pizza company, you could easily have a chat bot when people are ordering to say, great. So what are your allergies? Automatically, you don't even have to train it and do it. It can actually, you just need to feed in the ingredients and it should be able to tell you like, Hey, this is what it is. Oh, cool. and the possibilities are endless. Um, so, uh, mm. yeah, if you want to have a call with me, there's my, um, there's my number, uh, as well as my email address. I think that's spelled correctly. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's and amazing. You so you can your... do that for dinner. Like, this is what I have in my fridge. What can I make for dinner? <laughs> can, I, can I help you out? <laughs> yeah, I know. Like uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s, there were people out there that were like programming in. Like it was a, I forget what it, it was. They talked about it in a book called, um, I think it was the Lean Startup or, or Startup Orders Manual. They talked about this company and how they basically, their, their business model was trying to uh, take existing flyers from the local neighborhood and you would pay a subscription to be able to get uh, you pick your store and then based on that flyer it would give you menus and that was really manpower or person power intensive but AI can do that it's like what's in your pantry um, and you can just basically scan your receipt saying great this is what I bought from the grocery store and AI can put that in your virtual pantry and you're like great what can I have today without having to go to the store and it can based on your dietary um, I don't have time now but you know, chat GPT, if you have a chat based on your dietary preferences and you feed it, it'll constantly just continually to learn. And so that's free. So you can do all this now for free if you want. 
That's so cool. Okay. Well, I think, I mean, there's so many different options and I know we could keep going. Um, we also wanted to, and we put this in the chat here. Um, there is, um, there are some opportunities to, as we mentioned, get some funding. Um, the government, the federal government has the Canada Digital Adoption Program. Uh, there is an Ontario Bus program that I'm familiar with called the Digital, uh, the DMAP program, which is similar, uh, slightly different. Um, targeted towards manufacturers, et cetera, okay? So the CDAP program federally, right across the board, all businesses qualify for that. If you would like to know more about these grant and loan programs, um, let me know, okay? So we'll just book a quick meeting, we'll walk through just to make sure you're eligible and have a conversation about what it is and how it can really support your business. So if anything here were to resonate, it made sense, you think, hey, you know, this could really support my growth, this could help us make become more competitive, this could help this help us become more efficient. Um, you know, David is uh, an expert and, and please do reach out to him. And if you wanna find out more about the grants and loans, I'm happy to help you with that too. So with that, I think we are done. Um, just want to say thank you, David, for putting all the time into preparing this, uh, your expertise, your knowledge about these topics is amazing. So thank you. I hope everyone got some value out of today. And um, just want to let you know that this uh, recording will be available. I will be sending it out um, after it's edited. So probably by tomorrow or the day after you'll be able to get access to it. Okay. Yeah, thank everyone for attending. And, you know, I see no one seemed to have dropped off. So I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. Thank you for listening. And I hope, uh, I hope everyone got something out of it. Yes, definitely. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Take care.